Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. The information on today's program was gathered from many different places and many different people. So if you hear yourself in our conversation today, it's not all about you. Now, for speaking appearances or just want to take and talk to one of us, give us a call, 727-422-1833, or send me an email, dick at ewfw.org. Now, this morning, we have Miss Robin with us. Robin, how are you doing this morning? I am terrific. You know, this is a great opportunity, what we're going to talk about today, isn't it? Is it? Well, I believe it is. Oh, it is. It's important. <laughs> it's actually about leadership. It really is. I've been asked some questions about this thing called, how do I model leadership? You know, I think I'm a leader, but how, how do I really put it into place? And when I started to really think about that, I had some questions that really came up in my mind. Yeah. And so I started asking people things like, what does it look like to you? What's leadership look like to you? And it amazed me when I was doing that, that I got some really stymied expressions they never really had thought about it. And so I followed it up with another question. What does, you know, what does it look like to others? So when you think about leadership, what do you think it looks like to other people? There's lots of pictures fall from through my brain right now. A lot of <laughs> I pictures. I just got to say, hmm. yeah, what does it look like? So when we were asking those questions, <laughs> I have to tell you, there wasn't a lot of positive pieces coming out. No, it, was, it was eyeball chunks. And it, it amazed me that people didn't think of leadership in a very positive manner. They oftentimes put it into negative words that we won't use here on the air. And that bothers me. So we're going to take a look at this morning some timely observations of how to model leadership and, and what it can look like for you and, and what things you can put into yourself. Right. And the other part of this is um, if you're a leader of something, no matter where you are, it's a, a good uh, outline to grow. I think that's the biggest piece. I, I, in my yeah. observation, leaders are, are people who are always in the growth pattern. One yeah. would hope so. They, they're the people who are always just hungry to learn more. And, and they're thinking and planning and improving. Yeah. So Hopefully. let's take a look at this and, and we'll see if we can march down through this. And again, we, we encourage you, if, if you have any comments or things when we're done, give us a call. You know, tell us, hey, sure. we agree or don't agree. Send us an email. It's okay. You're not going to hurt our feelings. We want to learn from you. Because, again, we're trying our best to bring you those type of good information. So let's start off with the big one. Some of the timely observations started off with moral and ethical lifestyles. Right. So I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I really went to the dictionary and I pulled up the what it meant for moral. You know, it said of or concerned with the judgment of the goodness or badness of human action and character. So morals, what does that mean to you, Ron? Um, it means you walk the, the righteous path. Um, walk the talk? No, not, not necessarily, because you know what the talk is. Oh, okay. Because you can be walking and talking, it could be bad talk. Ooh. Okay, so what's, what, what's moral means, it's um, it's good. Okay, there's goodness. Uh -huh. It has a good foundation in in good good character and good activities and the way you look at things, the way you behave. Uh -huh. um, you know, you hate to see. You need to, sit, to um, consider some of the um, stuff that comes up about our national leaders and judge, not evaluate, not judge, evaluate. Don't, don't you think morals, but, though, are, are how we live? Uh, well, are they certain standards that I live it's, by? It's a healthy, a healthy standard to live by where um, you do things that are, that are correct and upright and righteous. Okay. I think. So when we add that ethical on there. Ethical. Which, the, the, I always thought ethical was okay. Your your definition here is um, being in accordance and accepted with principles of right and wrong that govern our conduct. The ethics is more set by society. Well, I guess morals are too. Ethics are set by the business end of it. I, it yes I and know. no. It, it seems like the moral and ethical 
have to work together. They have to be based together. And the moral is 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 the things I live by. You know, okay. and, and the things I won't do as well as the things I could do. Okay. You don't lie, cheat, steal. Right. And, okay. and the ethical piece is I really look at how it affects other people as well as myself. Right. Ethics seems like it's more um like like you said, it's more like like what you do for other people. Is it's, it ethical? How's how's yeah. this affect other people? Right. And uh, other places and, and and it's, like, it's more about, the, it's how, it's more the big picture. It's about a decision making in situations. Okay. I don't know. So there's probably better definitions. Lifestyle. Know. You know, the lifestyle is is really what we're doing daily. It's it's how I li I choose choose choose. That's the big word here. I lead uh, myself. <laughs> how I choose to lead myself and the decisions I make are they moral and ethical? And ethics, some there's a certain percentage of ethics that deals with what's legal and illegal. Well, that, that, and that is true. And doesn't necessarily mean just because it's moral that it, it's or immoral that it's ethical or unethical. Um, it doesn't necessarily track, but I think it it it, it kind of goes hand in hand. It goes hand in hand with, uh, you know, I can, but should I? Should I? I? Yeah. You know, and, what's going to happen if I do? And, and yeah. that that really starts mm -hmm. to 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 build in here when we start looking at yeah, moral, it's, it's ethical, all part of the picture, lifestyle. And because this is what we do every day, and and that's the that when I look at a great leader, I'm looking at what they've done every day, how they've lived their life, right. how, how what what the, the decision they made. Hey, everybody makes bad decisions. Everybody screws up from time yeah, to time. Yeah, you're entitled to But it's how things. they handle that mm -hmm. mistake or upset or whatever. It's how they how they turn that around. How what do they do about it? That's, that's where right. the ethical piece comes in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this next one, I have to tell you, I, I did struggle with it uh, because it came across as proper <clears throat> appearance. Okay. Now, that's like judging a book by its cover. You know, we were all told not to judge our book by but its cover, do. but everyone does and everyone has. It's kind of like that. It's um, more than just what you're wearing, this is how you appear to others. And the appearance, quite frankly, can be taken in, in so many different ways. It depends on who's looking at you and, and where their background is, where they come from. So it's more in the clothes you wear. Um, it oftentimes goes to your actions, your deeds, your speech. Something as simple as the way you walk up to the podium. Way you walk up, do you or do you walk up confident or do you walk up, yeah, I don't know. Or are you standing straight or are you slumping? Um, are you... Um, I'm just how you're how you're walking, how you approach the podium, how you approach people. Um, like I said, it's not just the clothes; it's it's how you wear them. It's how, your actions and body language. Well, it's how you all appear. Of that, how you appear to others, and make sure that you appear to others the same way you appear to yourself. Like I mean, some people might might I look at some people and I think, whoa, did you look in the mirror when you walk out the door? Um, and and other times. You look at people and say, wow, they really dress classy and like a leader. Like they carry themselves very well. They learn how to walk. And we don't teach girls how to walk anymore. <laughs> um, you know, how far apart are your steps when you're walking? You know, models walk over the line. I like to walk next to the line. Mm -hmm. Some people walk a foot away from the line. They walk like they've got something up their pants they can't handle. Um, literally. Uh, but, you know, how do you walk? Um, what are your hands doing? Um, like, don't pick your nose, you know, things like that. Um, but, but the whole appearance thing, how do you appear? Does your hair look okay? Um, do, do you have appropriate jewelry on? Does the man's tie tie correctly? You know, <laughs> how does, how does it look? I noticed, um, lately men's, and I'm listening to young men, so I'm thinking they're not old suits. Mm. Um, their suits look like they're a size too small. Like, I don't know they can button them. And, and not have a uh, chest bulge. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, look at the look at the way you're dressed. And people, a lot of people, most people, don't really know what's involved in looking good. There are people around that can tell you. Mm -hmm. Look for them. It might be the man, the salesman, and the gentleman, the good upscale gentleman's clothing store. You're not going to mm -hmm. find that at Walmart or, you know, someplace like that. But you're going to find it in a good store. They can tell you how to dress and what to dress and everything else. The same thing with women. Find somebody who um, knows what looks good on you. 
I believe and it there's also, people around that can do that. It can also be how you appear to others is, do they appear to be a good person? Do they appear right. to be a, a not a trustworthy person? Do they appear to be someone I want to talk to? All those things are sent out before you get to before speak. You go. I have a really bad habit of standing with one hand on my hip, which makes me look like I'm going <laughs> to yell at you, you know, like that mommy look. Um, so I kind of try to watch that in public. Um, but even the open and closed body language, are your arms are your arms crossed and you're standing there trying to talk to somebody? Well, that just means you're closed. I'm sorry, that's body language 101. You're closed, you're not open. If you open your arms and, and are kind of, you know, you don't want to be like all over. Sorry about that. Um, but you want to have, have some, some that also in another segment will will cross over into how you engage people in conversation. At the, at, with all that's part of it. Um, but, but your appearance is important. That, it, that speaks it, first. It truly is. And I think that's why when we put this on here, and these are some, you know, some timely observations. Mm -hmm. I've met some people who I, I really liked and I really wanted to be a follower or wanted to be in their, in their corner. But they just appeared to be less than trustworthy. So what made them appear that way, Dick? Uh, it was their language. Uh, oh, I was yeah. just on a on a, just on a call, and and the the person said, you know, we really really enjoyed going to this conference and everything, but at the end, when one of the conference leaders stood up and said, "Just wait for another three thousand dollars, you can be," <laughs> and she said it turned me off so bad, it was <laughs> like on TV, that. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed the whole conference until that last very moment, and. I walked away with a really bad taste in my mouth. And and that happens a lot. Um, uh, we have been over the years involved mm -hmm. in some multiple marketing things and still involved in a couple. But one of them, one of the things that offends me about their, their weekly presentations we used to do, and it actually offended the people that we were presenting to for the first time, yeah. is there's there's a it's a 30 minute presentation. There's eight minutes about the product. They should stop there. The and next 15 minutes is about the next product. So when, when you're doing but this. Wait, let me finish. Okay. The last the last time is trying to get you to sell the product. Yeah. You haven't even bought the product yet. You got no business selling it. And I can keep telling them, stop there. Anybody who's interested, the, the people who have brought them can give them the rest of the story. But we don't want to sit through a 45 minute presentation where 12 or 15 minutes of it is important. The rest of it's not. So, so the appearance there. It's part of the appearance, right? What is really? what are you leaving? That, that's what we're really, it's more than just what you wear. And that's what we're trying to get across here. It's mm -hmm. how you appear to people when they walk away. Exactly. What what's, they remember. What's left in your, in their mind. Mm -hmm. What do they remember? Yeah, that was good, Rob. Thank you. I'm, I, we, it came up over and over. You know, the presenter never changed the presentation. Not even when we spoke to him, by the way. No. <laughs> we spoke to them, the people we brought spoke to them and said, I was really in it until you got, at, at this point, I was in. By the time yeah. you got done, I'm done. I'm over it. Don't need it. Don't want it. So. Timely observation. The word is conscience. I looked this up and it was more than Jiminy Cricket sitting on my shoulder, which is what I grew up with, just so you know. You have to I watch mean, Pinocchio to know what that I, meant. <laughs> kind of like Walt Disney and the Jiminy Cricket was my conscience on my shoulder and told me what was why you shouldn't do that or that's not good for you. But conscience out of the dictionary, of course, comes the sense of consciousness <laughs> of the moral goodness or blameworthiness of one's own conduct intentions or character together with a feeling of obligation to do right or be good. That's really complicated. It really is. I thought conscious was, was what you felt bad or good about that's after the action. That, that's really <laughs> what they were saying here. It's just okay. a bunch of words. It's a big word. Blameworthiness. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Well, for me, having a conscience means knowing the difference between right and wrong. Right. Okay. And, and you have to live with it. And then doing it. And living with it. And what bothers me or what I'm encouraging you to think about is, is that having a conscience means this. You ask that question before you do it. Right. That's the moral okay. and ethical end of it, right? It really is. Oh. Like having the conscience, it really goes back to the moral and ethical way of life, the lifestyle that you have chosen to live. Or been taught or informed or experienced. Even if you've been informed and taught and you you've grown up it. in it, you have a choice to make. Do I want to continue there or do I want to do something right. different? You know, I could could be still on a dead end street there in the swamp. Not with me. <laughs> I had to make a choice. Choices. Um, 
So <laughs> think about that. that. This thing of having a conscience. And that's something we need to teach. The children have to be taught to a point. I mean, after a while, they can make their own decisions uh, and live with them. But I they need to be taught. I think it's early on thought right. process. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just yelling at someone, don't do that. I kept uh, them on. It's, it's, the, it's what goes into how that choice is made. That the conscience really starts to play a point. Leadership, and as a leader, that conscience is, is, is just as much about you, but it's more about everyone who you serve as right. a leader. Collective conscience. And so that's why this is really on that observational list. Now, another thing that's on that observational list is duties fulfilled. Okay. For me, this was pretty easy. Oh, yeah. You say you're going to do it, do it. No excuses. Right. Yeah. And what? I'm continue. I'm not quite. And you must be consistent here. in all your duties and expectations that have been given you. Right. Um, we, when we talked about this before the show, we talk, is this the part we talked about that mm -hmm. before you accept the job as a leader or any in any kind of leadership position, that you find out what the expectations are to begin with. You are presented with that. And then you know mm -hmm. what's expected and what you should do and, and not do and whatever. But I think the duties fulfilled goes broader because not everything is ever covered in those expectations. That's true. And in many situations, the leader's job is to do everything she, they can't find anybody else to do. Sometimes. So sometimes it might be emptying the waste baskets after the program. <laughs> I've done it. Okay. It had to be done and can uh, you do what has to be done. But um, I think the other part of the duties is when you are leading people to be leaders, uh -huh. you know, giving them opportunities to lead and see where they fall into the program further down the line or whatever and who falls off. Uh -huh. Not everybody stays on the track. Some people have to fall off. Right. right. Um, that you, you give people duties they are capable of doing at that time and work with them to make sure they understand everything that needs to be done and then you go forward. Um, you know, whatever that mm -hmm. means. But I think you have to fulfill your duties. I, I recently was involved in an organization where the head person had um, went in knowing what the duties were and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. She'd had some experiences in other organizations and we were all good with it. But early on, her responsibilities with her family grew geometrically, mm -hmm. which created um, a lot of work for her that she wasn't planning to do in her retirement. Uh -huh. So the duties fell to the rest of the, of the committee, which was fine. To a point. But to, a, to a point. But then it got to a point where you had to say, why did she stay so long if she couldn't fulfill the duties? Because we were really doing a, a great deal of the work. Um, and a, lot, a couple of times she canceled big programs because nobody said they'd be in charge. Uh -huh. um, at that point, maybe it was the leader's responsibility to take charge and assign all the jobs out. I don't I don't know. But you gotta do your, your duties have to be fulfilled. You can't leave things undone. It doesn't work. One of the things that we found over and over in the leadership programs, if the expectations are clearly written down in black and white and both parties agree to them, right. that it makes it easier and also it holds accountability. And right. that's a big piece of it. The thing is, though, is I've noticed many leaders who say one thing and do something else. <laughs> if you say you're going to do it, stick to it. No excuses. And if you say someone else is going to do it and they're going to be able to have some certain jurisdiction over the way it goes, stay out of it. Stay out of it. Let them do up. it. Be there to help and everything else. But don't, don't. I once was asked to do some jobs for on a committee I was on. Um, and I did whatever was required. It was all background kind of stuff. Did whatever it was required. It was all done. I go to the meeting. Um, the person that assigned me the, the task assumed evidently that I wasn't going to do them <laughs> and was a literally open jaw drop in shock that I had done them. Now, I didn't know if that meant she didn't trust me to do them. Oh, she wanted to do them. Or that's her, a different piece. her previous experience was people didn't do them. Mm -hmm. So whatever thing is, I said, if you didn't want me to do it, you got the wrong person in the job. Right. And and at that point, because it's a committee, it's not just two of us talking, she stuck with what I said, mm -hmm. with what I put my came the conclusion I came to because there was no guidance or anything else. So I don't know what her answer would have been, but we went forward with Robin's <laughs> plan because I think at that point, everybody realized that if they stomped on Robin one more time, she's going to walk away and then they're going to be screwed because if they need something done, there's nobody there to do it. All those okay. are part of leadership and doing the jobs, understand the responsibilities to begin with. 
It all goes together, and it happens over and over again. Huge piece. I hope I haven't done that to anybody. I really hope I haven't, because uh, it's not a good practice, yeah. and it's not a good a way to appear in front of the group. Now, one of our really good observations, I put down relationship builder. As a leader, this it's, is good. This it is good. seems to me that relationship building is, is a big part of what you're called to do. Uh, one of my friends that are coaches, she sent me something this morning that I really, I told her I was going to borrow and use today. No, we're going to plagiarize it. <laughs> and and uh, she was very open about it and said, go for it. It's called HEART, H-E-A-R-T. And it stands for Humility, Excellence, Authentic, Reliable, Trust. When I think of building relationships with people, the first thing is I, I feel is, is I want to know about you. This morning I was on a call with another coach, and, and uh, she was a little bit shocked when I said to her, well, tell me about yourself. I, I want to learn about you. What, what, what have you been up to? What are you doing? How are you doing it? And uh, she said, no one usually asks me that question. It's, you know. Mm. I said, okay. So I, I feel like humble yourself just a little bit and realize it's not all about you. The thing about excellence really was is I, you try to do your best. Do your best to be excellent in all you do. If it's building relationship, that really means being there in the moment, being there for them, listening with the intent to learn, listening with the intent to learn. It's much different than listening to give an answer. Or, or whatever, or listen so you can <laughs> say whatever you want to say afterwards. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've already got my script all done. Would okay, you get done said, talking so I can use my script? Right. Yeah. That's not a good plan. Be authentic. Be who you really are. People can really spot phonies. Whether you believe it or not, the fake it till you make it thing just is not true. People can spot that pretty darn quick and they know when you're being a phony and when you're being authentic and being really who you are. It really is a big piece. I'd rather put something there like do the best you can and be as real as you can until you can do better, you know, but keep growing. Yeah. But again, you gotta be authentic. Be you reliable. Gotta be, real. be reliable. If you've made an appointment to speak with someone or if they've taken the time to be with you, be reliable. Be there. Be on time. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Have a pen and pencil. To have something. Be prepared. Don't, don't just show up and be willy-nilly. Be reliable to the point where, hey, they, they, they're ready to come and speak. Share. Mm -hmm. Be part of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And the last one, trust. This is the one that all, all, if you don't have the humility, excellence, authentic, reliable, trust will never happen. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be there. That's why I, I, I really uh, like this whole piece. I'm wondering about that. Okay. She put yeah, that on that the makes end. sense. Because without trust, you, got nothing. you can't have a relationship. You have nothing. You have an acquaintance. Okay. And even acquaintances take trust. Just so you know. And the big one about relationship builder is you have to be available. Yeah, and that means open-minded mm -hmm. time. Your time has to be available. Mm -hmm. You have to be open-minded, and you have to listen. And if if it, if it's required for you to give, you know, some feedback, not well, something. feedback. I was saying, or some suggestion how to go forward or something. Mm -hmm. like that. Um, that that's okay, but it's not always necessary. Just to be available. There's a big difference when we work with people, when I work with people in the leadership organizations of just having someone you're talking to and building relationship. Relationships normally are more than just one time. They're a long-term piece, which means they take time, they take intentionality to put together. In order to do that, you have to be available for one another. Right. And, and like yesterday, you know, you get a phone call at some weird time of night and, and this person is in need so you take the call yeah. I, I probably could have told him to call back some other time when it was more you know convenient for me office hours but what's convenient for one might not be convenient for the other but when and you're available, available that's what relationship is all about what do you think I think that's all well well said 
And um, I mean, if you didn't catch it, all those letters stand spell out heart. So you know. Think about where's to, your to, heart? Where's your heart when where's you're building your, relationships? Yeah. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Humility, excellence, authentic, reliable, trust. And not all all relationships that come your way um, need to be need to be fulfilled. Oh, is Richard there? Sorry. Um, let me see. We get an ungodly amount of telephone <laughs> solicitation phone calls. Yeah. All right. The last one that's on our list for timely observations is priorities and the oh. ability to set priorities. And I'm going to put parentheses around this thing. Okay. Here's the deal. Leaders set priorities through the lenses of the vision, the future picture, the mission, the calling or purpose, and the strategy, the plan. And people set priorities according to their their business, their opportunities, their family, and their friends. Yep, they're boff. And they're boff. And if it doesn't fit, it it doesn't work. You have to have the priorities set. What is a priority? Um, you know, sometimes when, when someone calls at ten o'clock at night, <laughs> it has to become the priority because they've really got a problem they need to talk to you about. Right. So you take the call. Um, usually that's a family member, by the way, just so you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But but it's a family member, and you need to take the call. Um, but you have to always remember when you're setting your priorities, whether you're going to take a, a job or do a do a, a little something for a group or be in charge of the group or whatever wherever is involved. Meet somebody for dinner, whatever's involved. Is it part of your priorities? Where does it fit? And is it part of your vision, your mission, and your strategy to do that or not? And if it's not, say, oh, thank you very much for thinking of me, but if this is not going to work at that time. Mm -hmm. Can and we, can we, can we set this another time? So we can set another date? Um, what can we do? Many, many years ago, I was invited to, by a, a woman to join a, a women's sorority kind of organization, I think. Um, at the time, I was involved in a lot of different things that had, and kids still living at home that required mommy, mommy stuff, you know, and a daddy required mommy stuff, you know, all that kind of thing. And I just said, oh, thank you for, for wanting me to be part of that. That's really huge. But right now, I just can't put one more thing on my plate. But call me in six or eight months, uh -huh. and these things are going to be ending. I'm going to have some more free time, and I'd like to talk about it. Sure. Sure. That was, you know, and that's the whole that's thing. That's honest. Setting the priorities uh, was was quite what you have to do. Robin and I have priorities here to, to do the radio shows, to, to, you know, drive the bus for the church. We, you, you name it, we have a, a list of priorities that, that we have to look through. Right. And every time we have to do this on Sunday evening, we're normally getting out our calendar together. And, yes. and we're going over our calendar. Well, what what's going on like this week? This week? Yeah. And, and I thought I had an easy week this week. And then I looked at it and I thought, oh, my goodness, I, I'm, I'm really all booked up. Well, in all honesty, um, I came in a little bit late to, to this show. We were going to do it this morning <laughs> to kind of 10 o'clock phone call. Um, and I was going to we be done. And we're sitting here at. And it's 9.34. And he says, well, this will only take 30 minutes. I go, yeah, but it's 9.34. I'm sorry. I forgot your 10 o'clock call. And so you go away and do what needs to be done. He does his call. And we came back and did it about 10.30. Um, so, um, but again, it's the priorities. The call was a priority over the radio show. And it, and it was good. And it's okay because we can be flexible sometimes. And, and it was good because yeah. the young lady I spoke to, uh, she, she was uh, excellent to build a relationship and it's, I think it will be a start of a good working relationship. Well, I see our time is moving to a close, Miss Robin. So on behalf right. of myself, Dick Powell and Robin Powell and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. We hope that you have received a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. Now, if you have any questions or comments on today's programs, don't hesitate. Give us a call, 727-422-1833. Just give me an email, dick at ewfw.org. Go to the website, spend some time, look around, and, and there's a place there to leave me a message, www.ewfw.org. And when you know that you're ready to take and have us come and do a leadership opportunity with you, again, just give us a call. Let us know how to do it. Take some time and always realize, no matter what your organization you're in, no matter what you're doing, you are a leader. 
Well, until next time, this is D.W. The Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. <laughs>